everyone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Today's gospel reading is a bit controversial. It doesn't appear in the early manuscripts. In fact, it doesn't appear until about the fifth century. And it's very likely that it was not part of John's gospel. Chapter seven flows more easily and naturally into chapter eight, verse 12, without it. However, there are reasons for including it in scripture. One is that many theologians feel that it is a real episode in the life of Jesus. It's just been added in in the wrong place. And also we can feel that the story is true to the character of Jesus. Throughout church history, it has been held that whoever wrote this, the short story is authentic. It rings true. It speaks to our condition. And so it is worth our while to study it, although not necessarily as an authentic part of John's Gospel. So let's look at it. And we will start with the usual introduction, despite the controversial nature of the verses. And so listen to the good news proclaimed in John's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 53, to chapter 8, verse 11. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Then each went to his own home. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Not one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Once again, we find the teachers of the law and the Pharisees attempting to trap Jesus. And what a cruel way they found to do it. To be accused of adultery, you had to be literally caught in the act. But we have only the woman here. It is possible that the man was in on the plot and therefore allowed to get away with it and get away. But the woman was dragged into the temple court, humiliated, shamed. She must have been so scared as she faced the possibility of being stoned to death. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees were trying to put Jesus in a position where either answer he gave or any answer he gave to their question about stoning her would get him into trouble. They're trying to impale him on the horns of a dilemma. Either he could agree that the woman must be stoned, therefore undermining his reputation as the saviour of sinners and the friend of common people, and also probably getting in, him into trouble with the Jewish officials, the Roman officials, who didn't give the Jews the right of capital punishment. Or he would show her mercy thus proving that he didn't uphold the law. But Jesus' response floors them completely. It seems that their consciences at last kick in 
and all they can do is melt away in confusion. Now we need to understand that Jesus is not condoning adultery or any other sin. He tells the woman to go and sin no more. But this episode is all about grace. The accusers of the woman are not interested in her. They're simply using her to trap Jesus. We don't get any sense that they have any concern for her, any sense of her fear, any worry that they are humiliating her. Their understanding of the law was entirely without compassion. They're cold and self-righteous. Jesus could see into their hearts and he found the maliciousness there, every bit as bad as the adultery of the woman. Jesus respects the law. But for him, the law starts with love your neighbour as yourself. Justice should be tempered with mercy. And without condoning sin, he accepts the sinners. He accepts us, and we are sinners. And so he responds to the woman and us with grace. This led me to reflect on how I feel about people who've broken the law. Am I quick to judge, ready to inflict punishment? Or do I have any sense of compassion? How do I feel about the way prisons should be run? Just lock them up or spend time on re rehabilitation? I think Jesus would be pleased with the way we have progressed in the way we treat people who've broken the law, at least in this country and other Western countries. But there are still parts of the world where the law is harsh and it's all about punishment with no concept of rehabilitation. And that is not the way of the Lord. May we also learn to deal with people graciously. So let us pray. Lord, we pray that we may not be self-righteous and judge people without love or compassion. We thank you that we receive such grace from you, grace that as sinners we do not deserve. May we extend such grace to others. We pray for people in parts of the world who face extreme punishment for their crimes. Lord, we do know that people who harm others need to be kept away from society, imprisoned. But we pray that their hearts can be changed through the way they are treated, with understanding and compassion. That they may be given the opportunity to make a fresh start, as was the woman caught in adultery. And so we thank you, Lord, for the example Jesus gives us. And we pray in his name. Amen. We pray the prayer for South Africa. Lord, grant us a vision for our land, a land of justice where none shall prey on others, a land of plenty where poverty shall cease to fester, a land of work where all can be employed, a land of openness where all are accepted as equal, a land of healing where hatred and racial prejudice exist no more, a land of peace which is free of violence. To bring this vision to fruition, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen God bless Africa. 
protect our women, women and children, children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all those whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Then Christ. Amen. Keep well, everybody. Stay safe. Lots of love. Goodbye.